Um, so hi everybody, I'm Nicole Spagnolo. Uh, my husband and I, we run a website called The Wood Whisperer, and we started that back in 2006, and it is a video podcast, so we're podcasters as well. In fact, had I been at different times, I might have been on the podcasting panel. Um, one of my roles with our business is to kind of look at where we put our videos. So initially, when we first started out, we put ourselves on YouTube. There, there's a company called Blip TV. Um, there was a lot of these video sites cropping up. And at the time, the iPhone didn't exist. There was no app store. Um, but when the app store rolled around, I'm like, OK, this is another place. We also have our videos on TiVo. So I looked to places that people watch content, and I try to get there whether it's a Roku app or things like that. So that drove me to build my first app because I wanted to be in that space. I wanted, when you go into the app store and you type in woodworking, I want you to find us. And in fact, there are thousands of people that that's the only way they know we exist. We, they don't even know we have a website. They just know they have an app that feeds them cool videos and they can look at different things and see shop tours and stuff like that. So that was kind of my motivation to get into this. My real motivation came when I said, okay, I, I have a programming background, but it's a very specific language. It's a, it's a proprietary, not useful in the real world <laughs> language, but I had the concepts of programming. So when you do take a programming class, you kind of get the basic fundamentals of that. Um, so I reached out at the time to a couple of different developers and said, how much would it cost me to get you to build a very simple app that's RSS fed and and it was like $35,000. And I, I laughed, I'm like, oh no, no, no. And there must be an easier way. Um, I'm from Missouri, I am a kind of get her done kind of girl, um, always looking for ways to do it myself um, and get the most from it. So hopefully what I've learned since 2009 with my trials and tribulations of building apps um, can be beneficial to you. Um, I'm curious, how many of you are programmers? Any, any objective C? Anyone? No. Oh, good. You're my audience. <laughs> because that's actually how you go, you build a native iPhone app. Now, I'm going to be focusing on mainly iOS um, because that's my largest audience, but I, I do have Android apps. And I will talk to you why I hate Android. <laughs> and it's because of the development environment and the fragmentation of those damn devices and how my app just never looks the same on any of them. So it's funny because when I get in debates about Android and iOS, that's where I come from. It's not, oh, it's a better use. No, it's just I, I hate how my apps look on Android devices. Um, so really, as we kind of go through this journey. I want to make this interactive. If you have questions, I don't want you to feel intimidated. Um, it's not an intimidating thing to do this. If you can click a couple buttons, drop in an RSS feed, you can make an app. In fact, at the very end, I'm going to show you a really easy way to make an app that you don't even have to have a developer license for. So there's a whole, like, new thing happening where it's almost you pass through another app to serve your app. And that's really cool because then you don't have to worry about iOS, Android, Blackberries, all that. So I'm going to talk to you at the very end about that as well. So what we're going to cover, we're going to look at your options when building an app. It's important for you to know that the different varying levels of apps. So when you download it a long time ago, when you downloaded the Facebook app, it wasn't 100% native to the phone. There was actually a lot of HTML that was being pushed to that Facebook app. And we're going to talk about the differences between a native app versus a web app versus a hybrid app. And I, I prefer hybrids because you can kind of take the best of the phone and still kind of leverage maybe, maybe you know a little HTML, maybe you know a little JavaScript. So you can kind of leverage some 
even if you don't know snippets of code, there's tons of libraries out there that will say, here's the code that you can use and drop it in here and, and there you go. And then now you, ha you can enable a, a web page within your app kind of stuff. Uh, we're going to look at the process of submitting an app. Honestly, that's the hardest part. It is a pain in the ass to submit an app. Um, especially with Apple. <laughs> They're very <laughs> specific in what they want from you. So hopefully what you'll walk away with is when you do go through the process, what you've got your app, you've tested it, there's some really cool tools that you can actually test now from your phone without submitting it. So you can actually kind of see what that app's going to look like in the field. And then when you actually go through the process, researching those error messages. <laughs> Um, and it's just a matter of querying. And again, that kind of com comes back to who you choose to go with um, for developing your app. Maintaining and promoting your app. So I'm going to talk a little bit about marketing your app. Um, and this is important because as you know, the, the OS changes. Big ass phones come out and your resolutions are going to look wonky. And then you're like, ah, crap, now i got to rebuild my app my phone. And, which I have to do, I need to rebuild my app now. Um, but maintaining that and just things to think about as, as you're going through it. And then I'm going to, in fact, I'm gonna put this presentation online. I've embedded hyperlinks to everything I'm gonna talk about. So if you wanna go back through and say, I remember Nicole told me about a really cool app. Um, I wanna build a game. There's a really cool WYSIWYG app um, mobile framework out there called Game Salad. It's really cool. If you have an idea for a game, there you go. Easy. Um, so hopefully this will kind of get you to dip your toe into this world. It's not that intimidating. It's just knowing the steps to get you there. So this is kind of my background. If you, if you look for me in the, uh, in the uh, iTunes store under Nicole Sagnolo, I have a bunch of different apps. My, like I said, the Wood Whisperer is the one that I want, I, the reason why I started this, and then I was like, oh my gosh, this is so easy. So I'm, I have a friend named Scott Johnson who runs a podcasting network called Frog Pants. So we did a bunch of apps for him. Tom Merritt did Sword and Laser for him. Now these need to be updated, so they might be a little weird on some different versions. So, but um, with one of my, my Wood Whisperer app, I have over 68,000 downloads of that thing. So this is, this is a, a market that in your business you may be able to tap into. If you get really proficient, if you start charging for your apps, you can make us, you know, a decent little side income, very passive income on it. Um, I'm curious, why are, you, why, why are you here? So these are a couple of the things that I thought of, but I'm, I'm actually curious if, if your reason is not up here, I would love to hear it. So looking for a new audience to your podcast or business. Um, existing customer support, maybe you're trying to solve a problem within. So um, we have a, a paid membership site that I, I've been trying to leverage an app to say, oh, we could you know, support that community within there. But it's also a password protected, so that's been causing me some some challenges, but these are requirements that you kind of think of when you're thinking about your app. Or just simply to entertain. I, I can't tell you how many fart apps are out there. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm curious from you, do you do you have podcasts? Do you have businesses? Are you just kind of looking to my brother developed a new way to play poker. Yeah. And so um, and he developed a video game and then he just wants to put it um, my father was 92 years old said so told my brother said I think this would be really great as an app so we'll, we want to so you'll want to look at some of the the mobile frameworks that support game development so I have two for you okay um, and if you have video content that you put out there so like for us we have a lot of videos we have a lot of blog posts mm -hmm. we're basically repurposing reskinning our website into this app and serving it that way that sounds great so if you're a business, I've seen um, apps out there for EMTs. 
So EMT training, uh, you pull up the app, you say, I have, you know, a person that is blue in the face or whatever. And so it's all protocol based. The guy's charging 10 bucks for that app, but it's full of information right at that person's fingertips. And it's all native to the phone, meaning it's not a website that maybe they're out in the middle of nowhere and they don't have internet access. It's all within the app, so it can be um, viewed offline as well. I've seen whole books presented as an app. So there's different ways that you can kind of think in terms of apps and what you want to do um, with the mobile environment. Uh, as, as we get into deciding the type of app we want to build, there are things, like I said, we can go pure native, meaning you're coding from the ground up using Xcode, which is what you get from Apple, um, using Objective-C, which is the language. Uh, just recently, um, a new language was announced, Swift, and that is, I haven't had a chance to dive into it. I'm like, I just don't have time now for, for all this stuff. And that's really when we get into some of the mobile frameworks, the kind of WYSIWYG, drag and drops, what you see is what you get stuff. It's more for the people that, that don't have the time or the knowledge base to, to code something from the ground up. Um, so with web apps, it's literally your website kind of skinned in, a, in an app form. So you're seeing a lot of, um, so for the Wood Whisper, we're actually doing a redesign of our website, because right now if you pull it up in the browser on a phone, it looks, it looks terrible. Um, it doesn't scale. So responsive design is, more and more websites are using it, so you could pull it up on a phone and not even really realize it. The problem I find with that is, I'm not in a directory that people are searching. So I still want to have my present in, in that app store. Um, but now, because my pages are maybe um, displaying nicer, I can maybe use those web pages within the app, which is the hybrid version. So I can actually serve a website within. So Facebook does this today. Click on a link within the Facebook app, pulls up a web page. So that is them serving a website, a web page through their app, and you have not left their app. So you can actually go out and get back into the Facebook app. So there's a bunch of you know pros, of course, by using native features, by being in the App Store, you can tap into the address book, you can tap into the, to the camera. So especially if you're trying to get um, community engagement, um, send me a picture of I don't know, whatever. <laughs> a piece of furniture you build or something like that. So these are things that you can kind of use the phone, use the things that are on the phone within the app to, to get them to do certain things. All right, so let's get down to it. These are just some, the ones I found to be the easiest to use, um, not clunky. This is not a complete list by all means. If you just do a Google search for WYSIWYG mobile framework, you'll get a ton of stuff. Um, I start playing with this Appy Pie just this week and I love it. This one has a game um, option to it. BuzzTouch is another one. Uh, S-Web Apps. This one is Android only and I really liked how it, it looked and how it responded to as, as you built your pages out. Um, all of these have a free component to it, but they also have a paid component to it. So depending on the type of service you want, the type of support you want, it, it just may depend. I would encourage you to look at all of them. This one I think is completely free. A little janky at times, a little limited. Um, You'll also find when you get into the pricing, they all have a pricing tab. So you can go onto it and you can see, you know, it'll be like free for up to 5,000 downloads or stuff like that. So it just depends. Um, I liked Appy Page because they had templates to kind of get you started. So if you're not even really sure where to start, these are really great because then it's just a matter of dropping a, uh, an RSS feed in or, or a uh, a YouTube link and you now have a little app. 
So I wanted to show, before moving on, I wanted to show you a couple of these in kind of live, show you how easy it is. So here's, this is Appy Pie here. And I'll go back to the, the main dashboard. So you can see up here I have my games, my apps. So I can just create a new app. And I can select the type of app. So we can do entertainment. We can get into music. If you're a band, how cool would it be if you could offer your fans an app with all your music on it, a way to connect with you, things like that. If you're an author, blogger, if you're a charity, these are things that you can kind of build on. Um, so let's just do, uh, let's just, let's do a Tech Phoenix app. They don't have an app, do they? They didn't have an app. Let's build one. <laughs> All right, so this is more, what do you think? So this one has QR codes, add your website, blog, QR code, video, social handles, and more. So I'm gonna choose information, and we're gonna say next. This one's called Tech Phoenix. We can upload our logo, which, you know what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna, this is part of the planning, which is getting your assets in order making sure you have your, your logos, um, all of that. Well, I'm just gonna go to Tech Phoenix. <laughs> you go to Google Images, uh, but there's a nice clean one. Is there? Yeah. Okay. Um, I could have just a little more, but anyway, yeah. Yeah, we'll just download this one. This one's fine, even though it's old. It will give you the idea. It'll make it look like they've had the app for a couple of years. <laughs> yeah. Hasn't been updated in a couple of years. <laughs> so, and they even give you, I can choose from a library, so they give me some options, some lame options, but still some options. <laughs> um, so I'm going to upload. And they tell you, they give you sizes. So um, if you have Photoshop, there's also another uh, web service uh, called Canvas that I like. It's an online kind of Photoshop. Um, it's really important because <laughs> you're going to need it. I don't think that's a logo area, is it? No, this was not logo. This was actually oh, okay. background, and uh, I wanted to do the background first. So that needs to, yeah. So it's going to tr truncate it or crop it off, but that's okay. And let's see, this one needs to be, let's see, it will scale it. This is nice because most, the one I use, and I'll show it to you here in a little bit, for my Wood Whisperer app, I have to size every single one of them outside of the app, so it doesn't do it within it. So this is kind of nice because it does it within. So there it is. There's the background. I can select the different navigation. So I can do a side menu. I can use do a list. We have a matrix. I can choose the color palette, which I was playing with this last night. I wonder if it's my browser, but it wasn't letting me change my color palette. Hold on. Save that. So now they throw some in, some default ones, but I can remove those. So I can type in, you know, Tech Phoenix um, originally. And this is the part I hate. <laughs> I hate writing copy. <laughs> originally uh, PodCamp. Easy. Blah, blah, blah. And you just put all kinds of stuff in there. You can even change the icon so they give you a nice uh, list of stuff here. We can put in a contact page so the person can pull up the app and actually call someone directly from within the app. Kind of nice. Um, we can start building out pages within. So I can click and add an image. I can add a new paragraph. 
So these are just some of the ones that are, are kind of defaulting in. If you look down below, they also give you a ton of more options here. My favorite, RSS feed. Because guess what? Just about every website has a RSS feed. TechPhoenix.com RSS preview. Boom. So we can repurpose information that we're doing. Um, there's video. In fact, if you have a LinkedIn, uh, there's a sur you could survey. We can, let's see, put a video playlist in from YouTube, which is what I do. Um, and in fact, I, I'm going to go over here because I wanna, I'm gonna cheat a little bit. Because I have all of my RSS feeds over here. <laughs> so this is the RSS feed that that comes from YouTube. So this G Data YouTube. Actually, when you go in, you can actually construct your RSS feed from YouTube, and then use that in a reader. So I can just drop that in paste. This is the uh, most recent videos. Preview. Oh, it's invalid. Why is it invalid? No, it's not. This is where you do a little bit of work on the YouTube side to kind of get your videos in order and then you can repurpose them within your app. Let me see if that just works. Hi, I'm Mark Spagnuolo from the Wood Whisperer Doctor. Yes, we know you're Mark. <laughs> So I don't know if you noticed, but over on the side, I'm kind of, as I'm building it, I'm, it's refreshing and I'm able to kind of see what it's going to look like as, as it does what it is doing. So right now my video isn't working, but oh look, we got a Ustream option as well. So they're, they're actually streaming this right now live on Ustream. So if I got that information, the uh, Ustream channel URL, which I'm curious what it is, but I could drop it in there and it would show that. So if I did live streaming, kind of a neat, neat way to, again, especially nowadays with businesses online, you kind of have to be in a lot of different places at once. And so an app I've found is a great way to kind of consolidate all of those into one easy to use uh, little device. So I'm not gonna give you a, a tutorial of the whole thing, but you can see how we can Oh, I gotta change that. I can't leave that blank. So let's delete that for now. And it's pretty, it's pretty um, straightforward when you make a mistake. <laughs> They'll let you know, this doesn't compile right. You need to do this. So I can save and continue it. And contact is mandatory, we can't leave a break. Um, a lot of these, uh, these mobile frameworks too, will tell you, give you, like one of the ones I use, they would tell me, eh, you don't really got enough in your app to get approved by Apple. You probably should add a little bit more. You just, Apple is finicky about what they, they approve. Um, and you'll know pretty quickly when you submit your app. If you don't, if you hear from them in like three days, you're not gonna get approved. <laughs> it's, it's usually, it's like once I get past that 40, I'm like, okay, Come on, day seven. That's what's because day seven is when everything just happens and you're approved and then you're for sale in the store. And even if your app is free, they still call it for sale. Um, so the, I really like this one. And like I said, I just found Appy Pie this week and I just started playing around with it and I really like it. Um, the one that I use currently is a, um, it used to be a WYSIWYG and I had it listed here, but I, I think they stopped doing it. Um, 
is a service called Red Foundry. And they have their framework, let me hit play here, and this is this actually does require a little co coding knowledge, or at least the understanding of how programming works, um, because they they've simplified Objective C and Xcode and all of that, but there's still a little bit of understanding how different calls and APIs work and and all of that. So if you if you've gotten through, because what I ended up doing, I started out using the WYSIWYG. And I like to, I like to do a compare. This is how I taught myself HTML. I would see what the the WYSIWYG would give me, and then I would go behind the scene and look at the code and like, okay, so that goes there and that works like that. And if I just add this little bit, oh look, now I have iframes. <laughs> so this is kind of the same thing where they they've created a, a mobile framework to kind of simplify it. Um, but they're using either their own language, in the case of Red Foundry, or in the case of PhoneGap, they're, they're looking at that hybrid approach where maybe you know HTML or JavaScript or CSS. So you can use that within their structure to do different things with your app. Um, Accelerator, they're strictly JavaScript. Um, and this one, this is a, a link to a list of just tons and tons of the very more, even more uh, mobile frameworks. When you start getting into the mobile framework and kind of looking, it's a little overwhelming. So especially if you've never really gotten into coding, I would highly recommend look at the WYSIWYGs first. See if that addresses what you're trying to do. And maybe play around with it. It's all, they're all free to play with. It's when you actually want to start submitting it and developing it and kind of um, doing more with it, uh, that's when it can cost money. So when you actually become a developer, you got to pay for it, especially in, with Apple. It's a yearly license, 99 bucks. You got to do it. That's just what, the, that's, that's it. That's what you get. So when you get your license, um, you'll get access to Xcode, you'll get access to their, how you actually submit your app, which is called App Loader. Um, I've, um, when we get down to actually submitting, I've hyperlinked all of those to show you some kind of simple, this is what the process looks like. Don't get overwhelmed by that, don't go there first. <laughs> but know that that's a part of this. Uh, Google Play, $25 one-time fee, and Amazon, I don't think I ever paid for Amazon, but I'm able to submit my apps there. Maybe because I got in early, I'm not sure. But they're also $99 annual. Um, eh, definitely here, it's 25 bucks. If you're developing an Android app, there, there's something to be said about that Android environment. I mean, you got a lot of hungry people looking for apps there. <laughs> and whenever I release an app on iOS, I always get at least 50 people going, when's it coming out on Android? Damn it! Yeah. <laughs> so the cool thing about some of these mobile frameworks that I'm telling you about, when they compile, they compile for all of them. So they'll compile for iOS and Android. So you'll have two different zip files that you'll submit. And they are completely separate processes. They are completely unique. Um, As you're gathering your requirements for your app, as you're sitting here thinking, oh, you know, that would be really cool, or you know, maybe my church could use an app and we can pull in information from the newsletter and things like that. So you can kind of think and start building in your head, what's the purpose of this app? Is this app going to expand your brand more? Is it going to be useful to the end user? Is it, you know, is it how? What's it going to do? Um, I've seen some really crappy apps that like no one's ever installed. <laughs> and I, what is this here? Why is this here? And it's possible somebody is just teaching themselves how to code an app, which you can do that too. Um, 
This is a, a link to some awesome, awesome resources. So many that I just couldn't put them all in. I, there's probably, I think, 88 resources for free uh, images. Um, it's just a, an amazing compiled list of, of free images. Basically, every image you see in the slide, I got from freeimages.com as well. <laughs> uh, and like I said, the information text, the copy, as they call it, copy blogger. Anybody follow copy blogger? Um, I hate that part because you got it's marketing and it's like this is out. It's gonna do this and bleh. what's it called? What's that? No, the copy. What's it oh, there's a website called Copy Blogger that I follow a lot, and it he's really good at talking about why it matters to create a good headline and how you construct your blog post and do things like that. So it's just one of the places I kind of look to to get a little inspired and hate it less. <laughs> um, testing your app. This is crucial. Um, when I first released, I had a second version of my app that I, I released. I went out into my community and said, hey, I, I created a new version of, of our app. Who wants to try it out? And I got a ton of people. And I said, yeah, I'll totally try it out. Um, so within Apple, they have um, a way that you can get their, well, actually, I think with this test flight, it makes it a lot easier because before you used to have to get their UID or whatever. Nobody knew what that was, and then you had to teach them where that was. And then, so test flight, which is a new development with Apple, allows you to kind of say, this person can test this app for me. And they get like a little token on their phone and they can test it. It makes it way easier. Um, when you are developing, you need to have a support email because that's part of the process. You have to have a privacy policy. You need to have a support email. Um, so if people do have issues with the app, they can contact you. So I just have it support at thewoodwhisperer.com and it just goes to me. Um, it's so question, part of it. Um, are you yeah. saying the test flight can be used even if it's the first time you're developing the app? I'm sorry? No, so, so there's two part specifically within Apple, within iTunes Connect, you have a version of it called Ad Hoc. And that can be, you haven't submitted, it's not living on the, on the App Store, but you can actually send it out to people oh, to test. Oh yeah, oh, oh you, it's, a, it's a must. It's crucial for you to be able to see what that app's going to do out in the wild. Okay. And you want to try to get, but when I first started developing, there weren't that many versions of iPhone and iPad. I think there was one iPad and like a handful of versions of iPhone. Now we got the mini, we got the regular iPad, we got the Retina, we got four, you know, I, and I try when I kind of poll my community, I say, okay, who has a mini? Who has an iPhone 4? Because I want to see how it, and you'll see a lot, especially with game developers, it's just sorry if you have anything older than a, a four, you're just not going to be able to run this because of it's in that in those cases graphic intense. Mine are information apps, so they pretty much run on just about everything. So, and that's important being able to do that ad hoc, and then once you're ready to develop or to actually push it out, it's called production. So once it's in production, it's out there. And you'll find that you can actually limit where it's for sale. So if you want it only for sale in a specific country, you can say, I only want it in this country. I just click everything and it just goes out. You also, a new thing that just happened with iPhone, you can now share apps with that family plan. So if you are under your family plan, the app that my husband bought, I can now download on my phone. But only if the app developer enables it. So if they didn't enable it, thankfully I think they all kind of defaulted to enabled. Because um, I didn't have to go back and do anything different with my apps. But is it, would that be a moot point for free apps and just paid apps? Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, paid apps, especially those hot, high dollar ones, if you want them to pay for a second version of them, then of course you have to remember to go in and say, no, we're not going to allow family sharing on this particular app. Did you have a question? No. But you each get your own login or whatever. Like, where's the data going to be? Is it 
mixed or is it separate? Or? It's are you talking about the sharing? Yeah. It it's on the phone. Oh, it's on the phone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I can go into my husband's account and say, oh, he has the new whatever, and download it, and it's specifically to my phone, not on his account. It's completely separate. Um, free or paid, that's a great segue into free or paid. Uh, I've tried both. I've actually tried a paid app. I was so nervous too. I'm like, nobody's gonna pay a dollar for this app. And I ended up making about five grand on it. I was like, holy <laughs> crap. Um, <laughs> they do, would pay. Um, but especially, especially with um, Apple, they take a cut of it. I think they take what? I want to say 30 percent yeah uh, but still I thought that was kind of cool that I developed this I, mean, I spent a lot of time and when you create something like a podcast or an app I mean you're kind of doing a lot of it labor of love for me I was doing it because I, I wanted the knowledge the experience um, so it's hard to go oh, I'm gonna charge money for this <laughs> nobody's gonna pay for it but they do they do all the time so what you do is valuable. Um, but it also depends on what, again, that's evaluating your market, um, kind of looking at who's the audience. I've seen soundboard apps for 99 cents. I love the movie Elf. I love all this, the clips from that. I totally would pay 99 cents. But then you start getting you're like, well, if I did that, am I breaching copyright? And so there's some sticky wickets to some of it. So you have to look into what you're, what you're building and things like that. Another point, mm -hmm. would you, the observation has been made that it's, the cultures are different between Apple and Android, mm -hmm. whereby most Android users want free apps and most Apple users are willing to pay 99 cents for an app. Is that pretty accurate? Yeah, I mean, I, I pretty much all my apps, I, I did not sell an app on Android. I did it only in the Apple ecosystem. I would, alive in the Android <laughs> environment. Yeah, I, I, I would say that's totally true. But for like Angry Birds and stuff like that, certain game apps, that's, you're gonna have to pay what you're gonna pay. So like I said, submitting your app, big pain in the ass. Except for Amazon, Amazon just kinda says, okay, don't, they don't really test anything. They're, they're just grateful that someone's writing for them. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Pretty much. Yes, another one. Yeah, we got one. <laughs> I will say, it's kind of cool, though, when you go into the Amazon website, there's my app. It's right there. And, of course, I have some one-star reviews. I'm like, oh, oh yeah. no. Really That's the other thing. You're opening yourself up to reviews, <laughs> which is kind of gut-wrenching um, because you're like, it's supposed to work like that. I mean, if you've ever programmed in, and put your heart and soul into something and you're like, oh yeah, I guess I kind of did miss that little thing. Oh, that's a feature, that's a feature. <laughs> it's, hard, it's hard to say user error. Right? Yeah, right. <laughs> did you reboot the app? Yeah. So Google Play was around a day or so before it was listed. Apple is the one, seven to 14 days. Yeah. I remember the first time, they are just very meticulous. They are very aware that they have an awesome marketplace for apps, and they don't want to fill it with junk. Um, and I appreciate that. Um, I'm always, I always hesitate because I have a, a Nexus Seven. I hesitate when I look at apps. I'm like, can I trust that person? Like here, I have, Google Play is getting better. I will say they, they have. Um, just from a developer um, perspective on the back end, they've been doing more and more. In fact, a couple of my apps have been flagged because I had in-app ad placement and they're like, oh, you need to fix this. I'm like, oh yeah, I guess I kind of, I did kind of put that in there a long time ago and never really fixed it. <laughs> so they're getting better about cleaning up their space. Apple, I think is very rarely do I think uh, apps slip by them, though they do on occasion. But um, the first time I submitted an app, I was like, why is it taking so long? Why is it taking so long? So I'm Googling how long it takes. And so just know it's going to take a little while. Um, you can put in, so like for instance, when the um, 
iOS, I think five was it that came out. Um, like everything broke. And so I quickly recompiled and I put in first middle and I put in the comments, urgent uh, fix for latest OS. And within the next day I had an updated version. So there are ways to kind of bump up um, your app getting uh, approved in, in the store. Um, marketing. So how many of you market, do you guys have businesses? Does anybody in here have business? So you guys, you write press releases, you collaborate with other websites, you blog, pretty much the same with your app. Um, I was giving out, um, like before it had officially released, actually getting some of the buzz going with my app, with my community, um, and said, hey, if you really liked it, if you found it valuable, could you please leave me a review on iTunes? Because iTunes looks at that stuff and how it ranks and then puts you in uh, relevant order. Um, this link right here over at entrepreneur.com is a really comprehensive way, of course there's ads, but building a microsite. So same thing could be said about an ebook or a book. You build a specific site around what you're selling, whether it's for your pay, still you're selling it. Um, so the, this is just a great, it's like 25 things just to think about it. Um, the cool, one of the cooler things that Apple did with this latest ver, uh, update to the App Store was you can now record a video. You used to not be able to do that. So again, great for game developers that you can show how it works. You can navigate through the app and, and show them kind of what they're going to expect. So making a small video um, and then putting that part of, as part of your um, selling point. God, this, this, sheesh. Thanks, entrepreneur. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> Start a podcast. <laughs> oh, that's number eleven is a great point. Always be collecting emails. How do you guys have um, email newsletters? Good. So people say email's dead. It's totally not dead. It's how I get to my most enthusiastic readers, viewers, instantly. So with the Wood Whisper, we have been, we send out a weekly um, newsletter that summarizes what we've been doing, what's going on, what we're giving away, stuff like that. But I have 30,000 people that I can just say, hey, I just made an app. You should download it. Boom, and this your your email um, list is something you cultivate and you build, and you can build it a lot of different ways. Um, I use a service called Get Response. I know there's probably some podcasters here that use Mailchimp. Um, I used to use I think it was Constant Contact, but they didn't have um, an auto response feature, so. I like the auto response feature with Get Response because somebody just signs up for a newsletter and they instantly get put into a like a, a funnel where they get a number of emails that kind of go out instantly, seven days later, 14 days later, and it's just an opportunity. So you can, as you're building these lists, you can kind of think in terms of what you're going to be pitching to them. So that's great. I really highly advise everyone <laughs> that has some, like something within their business, whether they be a podcaster or just standard brick and mortar businesses, to collect emails. Um, running a contest is another one. Um, there's a number of, of services out there. One of my favorite is one I just found recently called Rapple. What's that? Oh, am I over? Yeah. Oh my God. But it's okay. It's been forever since I've done a presentation. <laughs> okay, I'll wrap up. So things just to quickly think about. Make sure you own the code. 
Um, if they don't give you the code, uh, I don't like it. Because if you're not owning the code, then you're relying on that developer to kind of do everything for you. Uh, how active is the community? Every one of these mobile frameworks has a forum. See how active they are. Um, make sure you realize that there's always going to be updates. How are you going to serve those updates and compile them? Uh, look at the case studies. Every single one of these mobile developers have case studies where you can download the apps that people build. Download them, try them out, see if you like them. If you don't, that's probably not the framework you want to go with. And then these are just some sources where you actually, if you want to start learning the code, great free re resources on getting your toes wet in that. And if, you, if I totally turned you off by all of this, you can always pay somebody to do it for you. Again, all of these mobile frameworks has a you pay us to do it for you option. And they're actually pretty, re pretty reasonable. Less than $1,000 in, in some cases. Compared to 35000 very reasonable. <laughs> so these are going to be some additional resources that you can check out, kind of looking at. Um, this service right here, if you go on your phone right now to tinyurl.com slash nerdtacular, yeah, I know, this is a, it's, it's a conference that I help run, and this can be put on an Android phone or an iPhone, and this is what I was talking about the pass through model. Yeah, we're using that for the speakers that we have in our group, and it lets our audience know where we're at. Love it. It's, there's a community element to it and everything. So if you um, have any questions, this is my email, Nicole at thewoodwhisperer.com. Send me your app. Is this going to be available? Can yeah, I'm going to put it up. Yep. The, the PowerPoint? Yeah, I'm going to put the PowerPoint up. Yep. Sweet. So if you follow me on uh, Twitter.com slash Nicole Spag, I'll be tweeting it out there. I also have a website, NicoleSpag.com, that I'll be putting in there as well. So, thank you, everybody. Thank you. Where's your hubby? He is taking care of our son. Uh -huh. <laughs> Tell him we, we missed him. It's good to have him. Oh, here. yeah. We missed him. YouTube Thank you for letting me know. I'm at Yeah, no, that's not right. I have apparently way too much to talk about. You two together that was are adorable. really awesome. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Hey, sorry. No, you're totally fine. So wait a minute. I thought I had till two thirty. I started two thirty. Yeah. Oh, what time did we start? 1.30. Okay. I was. Just, I thought we had an hour. That's probably why I uh, timed this wrong. Yeah, I didn't want you to stop. I was just going to <laughs> like, I was like, ah! <laughs>